Hey, this is Ryan again, or Callahan11 if you're seeing this on Reddit. Some people, well, one person asked me about my launch control already, uh, like minutes after I put it up on YouTube, so I thought I'd uh, quick answer some questions because it's really, really simple. Um, this is a standard size project box. Normally they're black. I have painted mine this wonderful shade of metallic blue. Um, I had it left over from a bunch of rockets. It's got one switch, one key switch, and then I've got two banana jacks coming out here. Uh, this is where I plug in the wires that actually go out to the igniter in the rocket to launch it. Um, I'm going to open it up. It's just four screws in the bottom, Phillips, and I'm not going to bother you with that. And now for the big reveal. Uh, da, da. Watch, I won't be able to get it open. Um, I am holding the camera in one hand and trying to open this in the other, and it's not working. So you will never see this online. Oh wait, nope, maybe you will see it online. Alright, so we have, on the back, we have a simple standard battery. Uh, it's eight double A's, Kirkland brand, yay Costco. This is just hot glued to the base here, and I think I had a little extra green stuff epoxy when I was fixing up the Renegade D the first time. So I just threw that under there for extra security. Um, inside the box, not really a whole lot. Um, it comes off of uh, what is a 9 volt connector. Always get the ones that have the hard backs, never the soft back ones. These are like a buck more for a package. It's worth it. Um, this is the back side of the switch. The red wire goes in one side, it comes out the other side. This is rated for, I think, 125 volts and 3 amps. That's AC. It's made in Mexico. Um, that'll be good for 12 volts DC. Uh, you gotta be careful with that, though, because it, there really is DC arcs a lot, um, uh, a lot easier and can damage the switch contacts, but, uh, good rule of thumb, I believe, is about one-fifth the voltage and DC is about the same, so if you have a 125 volt switch, it can handle a 24 volt DC uh, just fine. Um, from there, we go to the momentary switch. Um, this is a single pull, single throw key switch, just in case you didn't know. Uh, to a momentary switch, again with the red wire, I kept everything red that's red. Um, this is, again, 125 volts, 3 amps. Uh, I have the package. Came in a package of two. It's a Radio Shack thingy. I don't really recommend buying too much from them. They're expensive, but they were there. I got the key switch, the box, the battery holder from FS, uh, SF Supply, which is right out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's a kind of a, a big electrical supply store um nice people but uh you you order from them normally but i happen to live near their shop and they have a retail section um but they didn't have a momentary switch i could use out in the back here are two banana jacks i have epoxied in because i forgot to steal the uh the mounting rings or the uh the washer no that's not it a nut that's the word i'm looking for the nut from work but i had green stuff so I epoxied them in. They're just regular banana jacks is what those are called. Um, yeah. Um, that's the box right now. It will get expanded. Um, the actual cable is 22 gauge alarm wire that I picked up while I was an employee at Radio Shack ages ago. I am glad I'm not an employee there now. They are alligator clips here. Make sure you get the uh, the ones that actually look like an alligator's mouth. They hold on to, uh, let's see if I can get a picture of that. They hold on to the leads much, much better than the uh, crap you get from Estes. Um, these are booted, just so you don't have to worry about shorting so much. It's another nice feature that adds like 30 cents to the cost. Um, I just heat shrunk the cable together because it is not uh, connected like some power cables will come connected. The other end... Uh, this is a more than 30 foot cable. 
Let me grab it. Just has banana jacks. It really, oh, this one's coming unscrewed. It really doesn't matter uh, which one goes where. It's a DC circuit, so, you know, technically I guess there's probably a way it should go. Um, but it, it doesn't. You're just completing the circuit over a resistor. There's nothing in there that cares about which way the electricity is going. Um, yeah, that's really it. Uh, get yourself a... Any soldering iron will work for this job, but I really, if you've got the 80 bucks laying around, pick up a FX888 um, from Heiko. Uh, it makes a world of difference. Now... They come with the uh, the chisel tip, which you can't really see because my phone's not focusing on it. Chisel tip is about a thousand times better than a point tip in every single use or application. Trust me on this. Um, and I use the this is a like a steel foil that's covered in flux to wipe off the uh, the tip of the iron. I like it better than sponges. You don't have to worry about getting it wet or anything. But it does come with a sponge that is not currently in there. Um, yeah. I will make my first mod now to the box. I noticed that it was getting a little beat up. Sorry about the crappy camera angles. So I will put the cover back on. And very, very carefully, I'm going to put some feet on it. Not very carefully. Uh, avoid the screw holes, because I need to get in there to connect the battery. I disconnect the battery. I don't know why, really, because every switch in there also disconnects it, and it's not connected when there's nothing plugged into the front of it. Um, I like the removable wires, because it makes it easier to kind of store everything. You don't have to wrap them around something. You can put them in their own compartment in the, whatever your launch box or whatever you, wherever you keep your stuff. Um, uh, to paint it, I just primed it. Regular black primer. Um, I like black primers for shiny stuff better. Um, I do some D&D &D miniatures. I don't have any handy right now. Um, so I found that works better for shiny stuff. This happens to be a metallic paint. So I went with that. Um, and then, uh, cobalt blue. Metallic blue. Um, just rust -oleum spray can. Five minutes. And that's it. Um, I will post more when, uh, when I have time to do this stuff. Um, and money. Although it doesn't really cost much. I think this whole thing cost me 20 bucks as it sits now. And as you can see, there's no delay on the, uh, the launch videos. There's no delay launching it with either the Quest Igniters or the Estus Pro Series 2 Igniters. They light immediately with it. And uh, so do the regular Igniters. Um, when you do test it for the first time, make sure you test it outside on an Igniter. Uh, they do start a fire technically so yeah uh, I actually tested mine to set off a little firework tank because it was 4th of July um, you can't set those off with the the Estes, the Estes igniters but the Estes Pro Series 2 igniters can start the wicks on uh, fireworks there useless piece of info <laughs>